What is up my fellow gamers? In today's video, we got our tier list for the new damage type heroes in Dragonair. Like and sub for more amazing gaming content. Down below in the description box, go ahead and click that link and download Dragonair and start your journey right now. Dragonair Silent Gods is a season based game that will officially launch season two fall of Increscent on December 15th. Introducing new sandbox, new strategy and new optimization experience, just like a brand new game. Real quick, let's go over our brand new coupon codes we got the first one is dragon season this one was introduced for the brand new season two of dragon air and then we got a second brand brand new one specifically for the christmas holiday merry xmas now it is very important to note that these codes are case sensitive so the dragon season code is all lowercase and the Merry Xmas code is all uppercase letters. First one we got is our legendary, the one-eyed Carf. Now this legendary, I don't really particularly like this one as opposed to some of the other ones. I feel like a lot of the heroes that have to do with like the enlightenment damage modifier aren't as strong as some of the other heroes. Maybe it's just me, you know, maybe I just have bad luck with it. But I definitely feel like some of these uh, skills aren't as strong as some of the other heroes. I will say though that the battle skill is pretty decent. You're gonna have at least one stack go off out of six times you're hitting them. So really good single target damage and then the ultimate ability, you get tons of AOE damage. By no means, I'm not saying this isn't a really strong hero, but I just couldn't put him in the S. I feel like this specific hero right here, I gotta put him in like the A because I think he's like good, but not like super duper, like amazingly strong. Let's head to the next one. Now this is the one that I think is super broken. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. The Malficent, I, I have no idea how to say this. Passive ability is just so strong because he recharges his ultimate energy extra 5%. And it's just anytime he does a basic attack to an enemy under burn, but the ultimate right here, dispels all enemies burns. And I mean, you just do insanely high amounts of damage that stacks with all of the burns that are removed. For our tier list, I gotta put them in the S. For the next legendary one, we got the Stout Beard Durham. This is another one who I think has some insanely strong skills. I love his passive ability. Whenever an enemy's burn is dispelled, triggered, or expired, he just deals extra fire damage to the enemy and surrounding enemies. And the fact that like, this triggers so much. Like you don't understand. You're constantly putting burn effects on enemies. They're constantly being removed. Insanely awesome ultimate ability, which you're getting attack up and crit damage to all burn allies. He's buffing the heck out of our entire team. This is another hero that I have to go ahead and put in the S. Getting into the epics, we got the Swindler. This is the little bomber goblin guy. His ultimate ability I think is what makes him uh not fall into the b category that the ultimate is what kind of made me want to put him in the a just because that self-made turret i think is so strong the fact that you can put it anywhere on the battlefield so you can hit those back liners uh for this hero we're gonna go ahead i'm gonna put him in the a i think he's a solid solid epic hero next hero we got is another epic and this is the loyal guard oasis uh, this one i honestly like i just don't like this hero at all uh, maybe some people will argue with me and think that he's pretty strong with it. He does have like the ability to put a shield on himself, but really I just did not like this hero. I kind of feel like he's a B. I just feel like he's really weak for the burn team. Next one we got is our last epic and this is the Necromancer Lyle. He's another one who just doesn't have too much going on with him. Now the battle skill I will say is really good when you're doing your goblin layers for XP. That's where I feel think this this hero shines so it's kind of hard he's like an a for certain content right but then at the same time i feel like he's like a b moving along to our first rare this is the demolitionist uh biags this guy i absolutely love this is my wild card pick i think this is actually one of the stronger new rare heroes that we got i'm gonna put him in the a because i think he's definitely like a strong hero who's about average. I honestly think he's better than those two epics. And then the last one we have is the Crimson Robe Percival. Percival? I do like that his percentage chance is fairly high. This is what I do love about him, and this is why I want to put him in the A above those two epics. His ultimate ability grants attack up to all burn allies. Makes him at least an A tier for me. 
So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put him in the A list. All right, next up we have is our Ice Blast heroes. First one we got is the Glacial Sunbeam. This is another name I do not know how to say, but this is one that I feel is a little bit weaker than the other two legendaries. This one I'm actually gonna put in the A. I do, however, like the battle skill. I think this is kind of very unique. Again, it only plays a role when you're going up against an enemy who is very heavy on putting shields. Putting them in the A category for right now. The Devout Acolyte, Zor Zorak, Zorak. This one is by far the best Ice Blast hero. He is so broken. He's SSS+. Plus. I mean, he is in his own league. This is what makes him super duper S tier. Brings up 40% damage up to all Ice Blast allies, 10 seconds, and 100% chance of granting them one stack of Ice Crystal. So he's a super duper buffer. Honestly, top tier S. We gotta put him at the very, very top. Next one we got is the Undertaker, Shana, Shanae. This is another amazing Ice Blast hero. I honestly think that the Ice Blast damage type out of the three new ones we got is probably the best with Thunderbolt being very close second. I'm gonna go ahead, this is another one I'm putting in the S tier. Next one we got is our first Epic and this is the Revenant Frostblade Girthin. Does some decent damage. We have that crit damage up effect. We also have that crit rate bonus. Nothing insanely broken. I'm putting him in the A because I think it's, you know, it's just another solid pick. Next hero we got is the Maritime Miner. This is the little dwarf guy. This one I don't like. I feel like he's a bit weaker in the Ice Blast lineup. Uh, I do like his passive though. He's got a 50% chance of ignoring 30% of the enemy's defense. I want to put him in the B because I just don't really like him. I feel like he's just kind of lacking uh, compared to the others. I feel like the others are just kind of a little bit better. Next one we got is the Tundra Ranger bl Bleden, 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 and then the ultimate ability right here where we're again, we're putting Ice Crystals on heroes and we grant an attack up and two stacks of ice crystals to the hero and the ice crystal ally with the highest attack. So again, we're just getting lots of buffs. Gonna go ahead, we're putting him in the A. And then for our final hero in the ice blast, we've got the rare, and this is the Northland warrior Nord. Anytime he deals damage, we got a 20% chance of granting a stack of ice crystal to an ice blast ally with the highest attack other than this hero. I love that. But like, that's all he's got going on and it's a 20% chance. I have to put him in the B just cause again, I think he's one of the weaker ones. All right, and the final ones we have are the Thunderbolt damage type heroes. First one we got is the Caverns Light, Nisa, Nessa, Nisa, however you wanna say this. This hero right here is like the heart and soul of the Thunderbolt team. This is another one that I would put in the double S category on their own level. Passive ability, I mean, the fact that you're, you're putting this mechanical creature to follow the nearest enemy and you just keep inflicting them with electrocuted. This is a top tier S hero. We're gonna go ahead, put him in the S. Next one we got is another legendary, the Thunder of Order, the Per Kunte, however you say this. Now this hero has its own exclusive artifact. The passive ability when on the field, we gain that overwhelm stack. And this is what is so strong. This hero right here, he was constantly at the top of our leaderboard doing the most damage. And that is because of this. The fewer the enemies on the field, the higher the damage, up to 500% of the base damage. When you're going up against a boss, this hero absolutely melts them. So much damage. This is another one, we gotta put them. Top tier S. Moving along to the last legendary, we got the King of Calamity. This I feel is the weakest legendary out of them. And honestly, I feel like this epic is actually better than the legendary. Uh, when we went ahead and we were doing our battles with this hero specifically, it just felt like they were kind of weak. The only thing that I do like is the ultimate. We get that attack up to all Thunderbolt allies for 10 seconds, it's 15%. So this is good. But this hero, I don't know what it was. It just felt like this hero was very like underperforming to uh, what what a legendary should do. Putting him in the A. For our first epic, we've got the Tower Guardian, Hervolm. Now what's really cool about this guy is his passive ability lets him go ahead and kind of spam out his battle skill. That's what his whole thing is. 
And his battle skill does some pretty solid AOE damage. I mean, if you take a look at the range, we've got a nice square area of effect that's going on right here. So just being able to kind of reduce that char recharge time can really help out for stuff like the Goblin Lair or whenever you're facing multiple enemies. Solid hero that I'm going ahead and I'm putting in the A. Next one we got is the Spray and Pray. This is another one of my favorites. This is a wild card, I would say. Super duper strong. I almost want to put him in the S. Like I, I really so badly want to put this hero in the S tier. It's just, I love the turrets. You put these turrets out there and you're constantly putting electrocuted on them. You gain attack up on your turrets. The turrets just put so much extra damage constantly out that you you basically have three bodies on the floor. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put them in the S. I'm gonna put them like at the back of the S. So like just makes the S tier for me. And then the final hero we got is the Lucky Star era. So this is the rare. This one was really weak, really just very, very underperforming. Pretty decent single target damage for the battle skill though. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna have to put him in the B. All right, and there it is. That is my personal tier list for the new damage type heroes in Dragonair for season two. Click that link down below in the description box and download Dragonair now and start your journey in season two. Brand new season, span new game. Stay happy, stay safe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.